My friends, either you're closing your eyes to a situation you do not wish to acknowledge, or you're not aware of the caliber of disaster indicated by the presence of a pool table in your community. Well, you got trouble, my friends. Right here, I said trouble right here in River City. Hey, sure, I'm a billiard player, certainly mighty proud to say I'm always mighty proud to say it. I consider that the hours I spend with a cue in my hand are golden. Help to cultivate horse sense and a cool head and a keen eye. Do you ever take a try to give an ironclad leave to yourself from a three-rail billiard shot? Well, just as I say, it takes judgment, brains, and maturity to score in a pork line game. I say that any boob can take and shove a ball in a pocket. And I call that swath of the first big step on the road to the depths of degradation. I say first, but and a wine from a teaspoon, then beer from a bottle. Then the next thing you know, your son is out paying for money in a pinchback suit. Listening to some big out of town Jasper, hearing them tell about horse race gambling. Not a wholesome trouble, they should know what a race, but they sit down right on the horse. I'd like to see some stuck up jockey boy sitting on Dan Patch. Make your butt boil, well, I should say. Now, friends, let me tell you what I mean. You got one, two, three, four, five, six pockets in the table. Pockets that mark the difference between a gentleman and a bum. With a capital B in that rhymes with P and that stands for pool. And all week long, your rivers and youth will be frittering away. Say your young men will be frittering. Frittering away their noontime, suppertime, chore time, too. Get the ball in the pocket. Never mind getting dandelions pulled or the screen door patched or the beach steak powder. Never mind pumping any water till your parents are caught with the cistern empty on a Saturday night and that's trouble. We got lots and lots of trouble. I'm thinking of the kids in the knickerbocker, shirt tail young ones peeking in the pool, hot wind we have to school and that's trouble. Folks right here representing trouble with a capital T and that rhymes with P and that stands for pool. Now I know all you folks are the right kind of parents. I'm going to be perfectly frank. Would you like to know what kind of conversation goes on when they're hanging around that hall? They'll be trying to be Trying out cubebs, trying out tailor mades like cigarette fiends. Brag and all about how they're gonna cover up a telltale breath with sense. And one fine night, they leave the pool hall, heading for the dance at the armory. Libertine men, scarlet ribbon, ragtime, shameless music that'll drag your son, your daughter, in the arms of a jungle, animal instinct, masteria. Friends, the idle brain is in the free ground trouble. Hey, that's right here in the city. Here in the city. With a capital T and that rhymes with P and that stands for pool. We surely got trouble. Hey, that's Right here, River City, right here, remember the main, Plymouth Rock and the Golden Rule. Mothers of River City, heed this warning before it's too late. Watch for the telltale signs of corruption. The moment your son leaves the house, does he rebuckle his knickerbockers below the knee? Is there a nicotine stain on his index finger? Or anywhere else for that matter. A dime novel hidden in the corn crib. What's a corn crib anyway? I grew up in Bayonne, New Jersey. We never had corn cribs. Is he starting to memorize jokes out of Captain Billy's whiz bag? Are certain words started to creep into his conversation? Words like swell and so's your old man. And your mother wears combat boots. But if so, my friends, you got trouble right here in River City. With a capital T and that rhymes with P and that stands for pool. We've surely got trouble right here in River City. Right here. Remember the main Plymouth Rock and the Golden Rule. Our children's children should have trouble. Yeah, we got trouble. We're in terrible, terrible trouble that game with the 15 number balls of the devil's tool. We got trouble, trouble, trouble. Oh, yes, my friend, we got three big trouble with the tape. Ten rhymes with P. And it stands for pool. We got trouble. <laughs> trouble in River City from the Music Man. The Music Man, Professor Harold Hill, comes to River City, Iowa in 1912, stirs up a hornet's nest worth of trouble, tells the townspeople that the kids are up to no good. And of course, what he's trying, he's a con man. He wants to sell them musical instruments and uh, uh, uniforms and sheet music, and then he's going to skip town. And of course, he falls in love with the librarian, and everything turns out wonderful. Okay? But in the meantime, he's. I hear rain. It's raining, folks. <laughs> in the meantime, the next song we're going to do for the music man is a kazoo song. Okay? So if you have your kazoo, I know you probably don't have your kazoos on hand, even though I did write in the email that this was going to be a kazoo song. 
But if you don't have your kazoos on hand, you can listen to it again after we do it, and, uh, and you can play the kazoo. This is not coming up the way I want it to. There it is. Uh, so my, my, my wife, Pat, who is an excellent kazooist, she will be with me playing the kazoo on this song. So, so what happens in the music band is that Professor Harold Hill stands up in the middle of the town square on 4th of July weekend, and he tells them how he's going to solve their troubles. He says, I can deal with this trouble, friend, with a wave of my hand, this very hand. Please observe me, if you will. I'm Professor Harold Hill, and I'm here to organize a River City Boys Band. Now think, my friends, how could any pool table ever hope to compete with a gold trombone? Remember, my friends, when a handful of trumpet players sit to the famous fabled walls of Jericho? Oh, billiard power walls, come a tumble and down. Bum, 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 bum. Now a band will do it, my friends. Oh, yes, I said a boys' band. Do you hear me? River City's going to have her boys' band, and I mean she needs it today. Well, Professor Harold Hill's on hand, and River City's going to have her boys' band. Sure as the Lord made little green apples, and that band's going to be in uniform. Johnny. Willie, Teddy, Fred, and you will hear the glitter of crashing cymbals and the thunder of rolling drums and the glitter of trumpets, ta da da And you will feel something akin to the electric thrill I once enjoyed when Gilmore, Liberati, Pat Conway, W.C. Handy, the great creator, and John Philip Sousa all came to town on that very same historic day. <laughs> 76 trombones led the big parade with 110 corners close at hand. They were followed by rows and rows of the finest virtuosos the cream of every famous man. 76 trombones caught the morning sun with 110 corners right behind. Now more than a thousand years Comments that people made in the past. <laughs> yeah, some notes. Anyway, welcome once again to my living room, our living room. And uh, uh, this stuff takes a lot out of me, man. I'm retired, you know. Uh, but that that was fun. And my wife Pat is just a great sport and a great. She's got a great ear, so uh, she helps me out tremendously. And uh, you can't find it. No. Uh, there's uh, people. People are sending comments every day, right? And uh, I did write down there. I, I printed out a sheet of paper, and it's got to be around. Pat, keep looking. <laughs> All right, it's got to be around. The sheet of paper. It's got some of the comments, which were funny. Uh, and uh, I just like to read them to you and keep 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 them coming. You know, enjoy it. You know, and. Uh, Oh, it's in the printer. <laughs> That's where it is. See, I've tried to do everything to be ready, but I'm not quite ready, you know. 
And I know this is really running long. I don't want, usually I want to just do like five, seven minutes or something like that, you know. I think it's but, just uh, computer things how they want. <laughs> you can shut it off any time you want, right. right. Okay. Oh, this is, uh, the, this is in common to the sing-along one that we did, which was, uh, I guess you got uh, two days ago, whatever. It said, the woman was spectacular. Who was that guy? <laughs> All right. That's Frank Brennan wrote that. And here's one. Nice, jo nice job, George, but I missed Gracie. That's from Billy Hinch. I guess that was what I did in Nessun Dorma. He missed crazy, right? Oh, and this, this is, oh, this, oh, the other, oh, there it is. Uh, you know, a lot of people are mentioning in, when they send me emails about the Seagard Inn. That they, you know, they go back to the Seagard Inn. For those of you who don't know the Seagard Inn, back in the 60s and 70s, I worked with my brother Jimmy together. We were the Byrne brothers, and Jimmy was a nightclub owner. And uh, in 65, he bought this incredible nightclub called the Seagard Inn, and it was Jimmy Byrne's Seagard Inn, and it's legendary at the shore. It's an, it was an incredible place. And you always meet people who say, I met my wife at the Seagard Inn, or I met my husband at the Seagard Inn. And I met my wife, Pat, at the keynote, which was the precursor to the Seagard Inn the year before. So, so, uh, you know, so I'm getting a lot of comments about people. Oh, we go back to the Seagard Inn days, which was like 40 years ago. This guy writes, a 75 cent bottle of Rhine Gold would complete the Seagard Inn feeling. <laughs> Says Paul McGuire. 75 cent, that shows you how long ago it was, right? But then I got a note from a guy who I, I saw about a year and a half ago when I did a concert on the beach in Point Pleasant and I hadn't seen him in 40 years. He was there with his wife, who was in a wheelchair at the time. And, and this kind of sums up a lot of people who, you know, who to whom the Seagard Inn is something special. He says, I started working at Jimmy, he wrote a whole long thing. This is just part of it. He says, I started working at Jimmy Barron's in the early summer of 1970 as a bouncer. And with the exception of 1972, when I was in the army, never missed a weekend. This is where I also met my wife in 1974 and had to remove her from dancing on the bar in front of <laughs> you and Jimmy while you were performing on stage. Now, how'd you like to meet your wife that way? <laughs> And then he says, Sally, he says, my wife of 44 years passed away several months ago. Just wanted you to know we were married in 75 and it was a perfect match. In honesty, we both know we owed it all to the Seagirt Inn. So my brother Jimmy should be proud of that. And, uh, and I'm proud of that. Now it's from Pete Hubbard Wilson. So everybody, we'll try to come up with another song for tomorrow. God bless you. Be safe. Thank you. <laughs>